नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट मशीन लर्निंग अलगर्दम इट इज ऑफन द फर्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन अलगर्दम दैट वी अप्लाई ऑन एनी क्लासिफिकेशन टास्क इट इज ऑल्सो एन इम्पॉर्टेंट बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक इन न्यूरल नेटवर्क सो ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी लर्न इन लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन विल बी यूजफुल in learning neural networks so logistic regression is a classifier that can be applied in a single or multi level classification setups it is a discriminative classifier it obtains probability of a sample belonging to a specific class by computing sigmoid of linear combination of features sigmoid is also called as a logistic function the weight vector for linear combination is learned via model training as usual we'll discuss five components of logistic regression just like any other machine learning model the first component is the training data we we'll look at training data for logistic regression in two settings one is binary classification and second is multi class and multi level classification In case of binary classification our training data consist of feature matrix and a label vector individual example has a feature vector and a label that comes from some kind of a discrete uh, discrete set and there are n such kind of examples in case of multi class and multi label classification only difference that you see here is in terms of labels in binary classification we have a label vector whereas in multi class and multi label classification we have a feature uh, we have a label matrix an individual example has got feature vector and a label vector so you can see that only difference between these two settings is how the uh, how the label is represented or number of labels you know in binary classification we have exactly one label per example but in in multi class and multi label setup we have a vector of we have a vector of labels for every example and in multi class we have vector because what happens is that in multi class actually every example has a single label but since this multi class uh, setting is represented as mostly as one hot encoding we get multiple we get multiple feature out of which only one of them is is one and uh, and rest of the others are zero in that sense the multi class setup also has a label vector per every example so we have feature matrix we have label vector in case of binary classification in case of multi class classification we have feature matrix and a label matrix and we have label vector for every single example in multi class and multi label setup so the shape of feature matrix in case of binary classification we have n examples and m features and in label vector we have exactly uh, n values for multi class and multi label classification we have there is no change in the shape of the feature matrix but the label matrix become n n cross k where n is number of examples and k is number of classes and individual uh, label vector for example has the shape of k that means there are k values in each of these label vectors the second component is model we will be focusing on binary setting in this topic the multi class logistic regression will be covered in the exponential family so we represent model as h sub w of x where x is a feature vector so we calculate the probability or we compute the probability that y is equal to 1 y belongs to class 1 given the feature vector and that is computed as g of w transpose x and this g since it is a sigmoid function 
or a logistic function it is it is represented as it is calculated as 1 by 1 plus exponential of minus w transpose x so whatever is the value over here we take exponential of minus of that value so y is the label x is a feature vector w is the weight vector g is a nonlinear activation function and w transpose x is called linear combination of features so number of parameters here is m plus 1 where m is number of features we add an additional parameter for a bias so there are two steps one is linear combination first we perform the linear combination of features followed by application of a nonlinear activation function which is a sigmoid function in case of logistic regression so we can we can view it more in a neural network style fashion so what you see here is x is the input feature we perform linear combination first which is w transpose x we store the result in the intermediate variable which is z and then we pass the z to the nonlinear activation function and that gives us probability of y belonging to class 1 and since this is a probability the output is between 0 and 1 in case of binary classification we use sigmoid function as g or as a nonlinear activation function in multi class classification setup only change that happens is that instead of sigmoid we use softmax as a nonlinear activation function let us look at how logistic or sigma function looks like so this is how the logistic function looks like the x axis is a linear combination of features that is z equal to w transpose x so that is the x axis it runs from minus infinity to plus infinity and y axis is g of z which is the output of logistic and sigma function it goes from 0 to 1 and as z grows towards as z tends towards infinity g of z tends to 1 so as you know as we traverse towards this particular direction the the output of the sigma function tends to tends to 1 if we traverse in the leftward direction towards minus infinity the output tends to 0 and for z equal to 0 we have value of sigmoid as 0.5 So what logistic regression does is it normally has a threshold at 0.5 so anything that is greater than 0.5 is classified as uh, as coming from class 1 and anything that is less than 0.5 is classified to be uh, to be from class 0 so logistic regression learns some kind of uh, a linear decision boundary between between classes so we use a probability threshold to assign assign the sample to a class let us look at more general form of logistic regression that is with feature transformation so sometimes we are we are dealing with a situation where two classes are not linearly separable but instead there is a nonlinear decision boundary between two classes in such cases linear logistic regression is not sufficient to separate those two classes in that case we perform feature transformation and we represent a feature transformation as phi and one of the feature transform that all of us are aware of is a polynomial feature transformation of a specific degree so here what i changed from the previous equation is instead of just having a feature vector here we now have a transformation of the feature vector or phi of x you are familiar with all these uh, all these symbols y is the label x is the feature vector and now phi is the feature transformation w is the weight vector g is a nonlinear activation function so w transpose phi of x is linear combination of transform features 
the feature transformation, for example, polynomial feature transformation, enables us to fit nonlinear decision boundaries. So, logistic regression with polynomial feature transformation or any general feature transformation will have more parameters because now we'll have more features uh, resulting from this feature transformation. And there is a weight corresponding to every feature in logistic regression. Hence, the, the transformed representation will have more number of features. So we have seen two types of logistic regression, one that uses feature vector as it is and in the second one we first perform the, we first perform the feature transformation and then we apply the logistic regression steps that is the linear combination followed by nonlinear activation which is a logistic function or a sigmoid function. So learning problem here is to estimate the weight vector. What is not known to us is the weight vector x which is feature matrix is known, y which is label that is also known in the training set. And we need to estimate this particular weight vector w based on the training data. And how do we do it? We, we minimize some kind of a loss function through an, through an appropriate optimization procedure. So in the next session, we'll look at the loss function that is used in the logistic regression.